So Princess Kedogo, that's her name. <laughs> She's asking what happens when one takes the exam and later on they discover that they have failed. Yes, yeah, that, that is an interesting question. I was wondering if the question was from the perspective of the individual or the perspective of the actual organization. But um, either way, um, I think from the perspective of the individual, maybe that's how I'm, I'll look at it. So you've taken an exam and you failed, <laughs> you know. I can count on my hands the number of actuaries I know that did not fail an exam. And I know a lot of actuaries, you know, so, and I'm not one of them. <laughs> I have failed, you know, a couple of exams. Um, so, you know, for from the perspective of yourself, I mean, I think Andy touched on this as well during his presentation. You know, we ha and uh, we, we haven't failing happens to most of us, right? Failing multiple exams also happens to to, to many people. The pass rates are are low. Most people are going to fail. But you know, if you at first you don't succeed, you can try again. Jo Josh from the U.S. He gave his his perspective of how he. Passed the first one, failed, you know, failed the second one, you know, had to do the second one twice, the third one three times, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. Um, so I, I would say don't, you know, yes, pick yourself up. You, I remember, you know, you get that failing grade. You're like, oh, OK, pick yourself, you know, give mourn for a day or two. Pick yourself up and try again. And and the, the you know, the advice I would give to you is try and put in as much time as you can like to me and that's what made the difference that's what really clicked for me right was that don't think oh i'm just going to study get through the 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 syllabus and then i'll take the exam off fine no like you need to put in the required time and everybody that's taking these exams is smart but we still have fail failures right you need to put in the required time. You know, I, I know for the CAS exams, we actually had a recommendation it was like 400 hours an exam or something. Some of them are 300, but put in that time. I used to do a schedule. I used to have a schedule of how many hours I'm planning to study every day. And I'd start, I used to start four and a half months out from the exam. So I had the exam date and I had a calendar for every day that until that exam date, how many hours did I need to study and I did an actual person expected. How many have I studied? How many did I have? How many am I behind? And then I'd have to find days to make up for it. Like that, that's how I passed my exams. You know, I'm sure other people might have uh, different different perspectives of how they got there, but that that's how I did it. Um, I, I, I made use of tutorials. I know um, the IFOA, Irene, you can correct me if I'm wrong. You have that. Um, they they have a great that's sort of like grading report or something where you can you can I think you pay extra to to get um, someone to sort of review where you, where you went wrong, um, but that costs money as well. So you know if you if, if you can't get there, um, that's what I do. Like put in the time, you know, and I can tell you like if I think about the, the people I know and how people pass. The people who are willing to sacrifice and put in that time were the ones that passed. Like to me, that was one of the the biggest indicator. Are you gonna put in the time, or you're just gonna say, "Oh yeah, no, I'm going for drinks with the people today." Ah, you know, like definitely do what you need to do. I did schedule time for. I did schedule time for hanging with friends. I scheduled time for a, a holiday or break here. But that that's how I had to do it. Um, put in the time. And don't don't you know? Don't give give up. Like try, just try. try if you accept first, you said don't succeed. Try again. If you need to do something different, like maybe get a get a tutorial that you didn't do, or or speak with people, or get a study group, then do that as well. Um, but yeah, for me, putting in the time was really what made the difference. Yeah, I would I would just echo what Yvonne said. Very similar experiences for myself. I I there were some exams I passed the first time, and and uh, one one exam that took me four times to to get passed. And so it was just the perseverance of of, of working through that, uh, and and putting together a schedule and knowing that you had to actually put the hours in for the exams. That that you know we have a rule of thumb that for every hour of exam, if an exam is three hours, you probably should put in 100 hours for each hour of exam, so 300 hours of preparation time. 
and it's not like I mean it's a different studying at least for me than 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 I did in university that I had to learn to study in a different level for these exams versus what I did in university courses so um, but there's no limits on the number of times you can take exams I don't think from any of our associations so um, you know the only downside of that is the the, the, the obvious cost associated with it and um, in some cases, you know, employers aren't going to continue to support you in an exam system if you're not passing. Um, so that's sort of the balance that you have to work on. So put the work in up front rather than having to do it multiple times is sort of the best advice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Rim. Yeah. If uh, you fail a paper so many times, yeah, like I did for a particular particular paper, yeah, uh, what uh, I for actually had uh, during my days that uh, there was some support uh, system through a counseling uh, session. <laughs> Not that uh, I was actually going insane, yeah, but just to appreciate as to why exactly, yeah, 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 I'm actually failing, failing that paper. Yeah, so my background being math, uh, being in mathematics, yeah, uh, uh, the first non-mathematics paper I did in the in the actual profession. Yeah, I, I just didn't get it right so many, so many times. So on the third fail, I just thought, yeah, let me uh, get this counseling uh, session from I4. Yeah, and it was such a, an eye opener. Yeah, you get to see your script. Yeah, and compare with uh, what the examiner's solution really is. And uh, you, with that comparison, it can just tells you it just tells you exactly how how you actually went wrong. And uh, one of the things that you realize that uh, since it was it was a very obvious paper, is just the exam technique. Yeah, just the way that you respond to a mathematical paper is not the same way that you'll uh, 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 rather uh, respond to a non-mathematical yeah, paper. It really helps to know how to 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 respond to this uh, to this question. When they say explain, what are you supposed to explain? When they say describe, how are you supposed to describe? And things of that sort really help when you get uh, somebody to go through yeah some of the pitfalls yeah that you may actually yeah encountered uh, a, a strange one was uh, a paper that I actually failed, which I thought I'm going to score very high marks. And actually, when I went for the counseling session, really, the key thing, yeah, the counselor told me that you you failed this paper because you knew too much about it. So you're not responding to the question. You're just answering your own questions, really. Yeah, so, so, so getting that uh, word actually made a big difference. And that's how I could actually make it, yeah, for the for the papers. I don't mind chiming as well because I, I think I had both experiences. I, I think, well, like Yvonne said, I was so scared of failing, or you know, I sort of built that model so well, or I thought I did anyway. That, uh, and I, I think in my mind we sort of knew uh, at the time we were studying that we are competing against you know a global audience, and we're really scared of the Asians because they're very clever. So we we were saying with my study group that uh, you know you have to put in times five the effort. So the, the model worked for a lot of exams. And I, I think, I, 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 to be honest, I think it's one of those things you don't expect to pass. I remember I used to put off my phone and other things on the day the exam results come out because at that point in time, it was not confidential. They used to post the names so, so you would know. So yeah, I think it's a bit psychological, but I think like with everything, all like even with your your current actuarial degree, you do your best and like, as I say, let go of the rest. and. That formula can work, especially because you get a lot of study tips as well. You know, you get the study banks. Like, I think there is a lot to do with practice and and, the, and exam technique, as they say. But then you, so I, I was I was on that trajectory to be the person Yvonne was talking about who had never filled the exams. And then I started sitting this exam called communications, which is supposed to be the easiest. And I think my study uh, routine changed to uh, assuming that it was easy and I was going to pass it. and. Uh, I then learned what it means to get exam cancelling <laughs> because I could not understand uh, why why I was not passing it. Um, so I, I think there are many strategies. Um, I think for me, yeah, getting support is, is really useful, getting feedback. And I think even studying with, with others on the journey, I think that's maybe the one thing I wanted to add. I, I don't feel like I would have passed and qualified without the, the people who are studying at the same time with me and, and the support we had with each other.